Hey guys, this is KSP with Tape, and today you join me for episode 4 of A New World. And today we start with a very epic launch that kind of doesn't do anything. I thought this was because of thrust to weight ratio, but it's actually some weird glitch with the launch pad. Because this is my new sexy launch pad, which I spent lots of money on, and it seems to be messing around with my rockets. As you will see now, um, well, see again now, I was like, okay, so what's going on? And you can see the engine is firing at full capacity, and I have launched this rocket before, so it should work, but it looks like it's a tiny bit embedded in the launch pad, which I'm thinking might just be a glitch in the beta that surely someone would have pointed out, or maybe it's just with KW engines. Actually, is that hovering above the launch pad? It's some sort of glitch. Um, but at the time, I was like, maybe it's a thrust-to-weight ratio thing, or something like that. Although it doesn't appear to be, since I've burned off all of my fuel. So I did waste a bit of money on fuel just then. But anyway, we can move on to something pretty much the same. I just put a bigger engine on it and was like, well, fuck you, launch pad. We're gonna just tear it up with this new engine. So it looks like it actually so powerful, it broke the glitch. So that's how I did this. Yeah, I broke the glitch. It was that powerful. Anyway. This is, I believe, launching a satellite into orbit for another commercial company. Um, ooh. <clears throat> when this airs, SpaceX will have flown the Discoverer mission and possibly landed their first stage. Um, I wonder how that will uh, how that will work out. I hope very much I'm going to watch that tonight. I'm going to stay up a little late. Stay up a little late because it's a Sunday night. Should be going to bed early. Should be going to bed early to, uh, you know, get ready for school, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna do a bad thing. You stay up late, watch the SpaceX launch. Now, I'm, I really want to watch it because I think it'll be awesome. And I try to watch as many launches as I can because I just really like it. I really like the whole... I just like live streams, I think. I quite like doing them. I did one uh, last Saturday, which was very fun. Um, oh, but anyway, back to the episode. After that launch, um, you can see I've actually started to flip out of control. This is why I left this in, because of this flip. Um... And yeah, so uh, it did flip out of control. I'm like, I'm pretty good, I can control this. But then I'm like, I'm far too low in the atmosphere to get this back. Like, if it's at about 20 kilometers, you can flip around and fix it. But this is too low. This is, this is screwed. And I would probably usually just click revert just out of force of habit. But this is hard mode. There will be no reverting. If I fail, it is my fault. That really hurt. Why did I slap my own hands? Um... So yeah, I'm thinking, screw the first stage, that's gone. Let's try and land the second stage, try and get as much money back. Usually I don't do this sort of thing, but I'm thinking, I don't want to run out of money. Rockets are really expensive, so let's try and just fix this. It's a shame it doesn't already have built-in um, reusability capabilities, uh, if that makes any sense. Because then it would be like, oh, I'll land. Because you can imagine if SpaceX flamed out and somehow didn't, the, like the engine didn't completely explode, they'd be like, well, we could just land this rocket. But it would probably just, you'd rarely get just a bit of a failure in rockets. Anyway, I'm coming down, coming down with my first stage, just planning a landing. That payload is um, very, very important. I believe, who am I launching this for? I think it's um, Sean Cannery. Yeah, the Sean Cannery Corporation needs this put in orbit. Um, but yeah, uh, I have a lot of things going on this episode, lots of stuff, going back to the moon, and talking of moons, whilst I have, um, a little bit of time, I actually saw some moon rocks on Friday, they were brought into school by someone who had visited NASA, well, by, um, a teacher who had visited NASA, on loan, of course, because moon rocks are worth a lot of money, these were a few grams, they were worth around 13 million dollars, and I did see them, I didn't get to touch them, but they were in, um, they were in a glass casing, so I couldn't have touched them anyway. But I did touch some very awesome meteorites. Anyway, we splash down, and the second stage and fairings are destroyed, but the satellite is fine. So we'll haul that back, drain it of water, and try again. But yeah, anyway, I did, and I did touch some meteorites, and I actually held them in my hand. I held something in my hand that was older than the Earth by about 150 million years. It was pretty mind-blowing. But yeah, it was very cool, and just very awesome that NASA would... Um, I think it was, yeah, it was a NASA who allowed a school to see that. Anyway, moving on, we got a weird glitch where Kerbin exploded. Um, so that was a bit weird. Um, I haven't had much glitching so far, but yeah, I think it was just generic texture glitches. So that's very annoying um, that, well, it's very annoying I lost all that money because of, um, 
It was probably my fault, actually. It probably exploded because of something I did, but um, but it did look a bit like a glitch, so I was a little annoyed. But I imagine it was probably my fault. Anyway, let's do this mission. It's been five minutes, and we haven't got above ten kilometers. So, we are going to take this to space on my new big rocket, a big reliable rocket that we know will work and know will get it to the place, because we only have one more shot at this before it becomes economically unviable but luckily this um this mission does pay like i think total about 60 grand so um it will cover all of my failures i believe which is good because i had a lot of failures just then um usually i do go through kind of a bit of um, a spree of failures when i start failing so they can be very expensive so i try to do it so um, i try to take on high paying missions especially because i need to start upgrading more of the um vehicle uh, more of the buildings. Anyway, I fail again, but I'm not going to let that stand in my way. So I get regain control of the rocket. I'm not losing another one. Um, I'm not going to lose another one. I'm not going to lose all that money. I need that money for, um, well, for more rockets, basically. So yeah, let's um, ignite the engine of the first stage, burn out all that fuel, and start sending this to orbit. It doesn't have any SAS, so I'm having a little trouble controlling it. That's the main reason I... Um, have problems with probes is I don't have um, advanced SAS yet. I only have reaction wheels, so um, it's pretty. It's just pretty difficult. Um, anyway, let's uh, let's move into the correct position to uh, deploy this satellite. Make sure it has all the solar power it needs. Anyway, um, right, we're now in position. Now it's time for our burn to get roughly into the right. Well, into as close uh, to the right orbit as possible. Close enough, basically. Close enough to get paid, and I have been paid, now I just have to hold attitude for 10 seconds. And there we go, that's 10 seconds of holding attitude, and back into one times time accelerate we are in space. This mission um, said that we had to put a power generation and a communication system on there, which we have achieved both of them and delivered it to the right orbit. So now we have been paid a lot of money. Money that will go towards new research, new horizons, all that stuff. Anyway, better extend the um, communication dish. Um, although that decouple did send this into a slightly uncontrolled spin, so this will probably be a useless satellite. So, let's move on. Um, this is... Oh no, this isn't going to the moon. I was going to say this is going to the moon, but this is actually something else. Um, this is going to a higher orbit above Kerbin. It is being paid for by a company who wants me to um, return some scientific data from around Kerbin. It can be anywhere, so I have chosen to go higher than we have ever been with a Kerbal before. Before we go send a Kerbal to the moon, we need to know that he won't die going high above Kerbin. So, um, we are sending him to, uh, I think above 300 kilometers, uh, which counts as high above Kerbin. So we'll get a nice, nice, um, nice money shot and get some nice science mainly. And a bit of money. It'll be covered, and I think I'll make about five grand profit from this, because I think it was a $14,000 rocket, and with including the advance, I think I got about 19000 out of it or something. So yeah, um, uh, cheeky five grand to spend on, um, spend on Kerbal Champagne. But anyway, we were rising high above um, Kerbin, and Milbury seems to be fine. Um, I am going to go into orbit, even though I don't need to, um, just to make sure I get that... Si um, the, the reward for um, science around Kerbin, because sometimes I think that might mean I have to be in orbit, but I'm not sure. Anyway, <clears throat> let's return this to uh, return this to Kerbin now. Um, just deorbit very simply. I left this all at four times time accelerate because it's very standard stuff. Um, and we'll ditch this stage and uh, set up the parachutes. I hate how the parachutes are always set up stupidly now. I don't know what that's about. Maybe it's a deadly reentry thing, or maybe it's just standard in the game. But I have played very little point ninety without this set of mods, so you know, who knows? Hmm. No, oh, I'm a little bit coldy. It makes it kind of very annoying to talk. Anyway, we are actually um, going through some pretty intense fire right now. I'm trying to balance um, uh, those two mystery goo units so they don't both explode. Although it's fine if one of them explodes because they're carrying the same data. That's why I brought well, I brought two for balance and so that if one burns off. The other one still has the data. Um, I lose a parachute for some reason. The top parachute, for some reason, was lost. It's fine because I have those other two, but I'm uh, not sure what happened with that. Maybe just some sort of um, problem with the rocket, or problem with the parachute, as I imagine it would probably be. Anyway, we touch down on the water, and we are fine. So let's recover this, 
and see the science we got. 64 science in total now, um, and my mission has been completed. But yeah, that looks pretty good. I um, have got some uh, pretty good data. And I got, no, I got a couple grand back, that's alright. Um, and I have completed the mission, 18,000 funds, which is good. Um, so, uh, with that science, I think I'm going to unlock this, because I quite like um, those launch struts for some bigger things. Although I don't unlock them right now, because, uh, well, I don't need them right now. And I'm thinking about upgrading some of these things, um, but... I kind of want to save, kind of conserve my funds, because I know kind of what I want, and I don't really have enough money for any really big upgrades, um, which isn't fantastic. I could probably upgrade the uh, mission control place, and then I could get a lot more missions and make a lot more money. That's probably a good idea. So I might do that at some point. But right now, I'm just kind of looking through the costs and the benefits. Um, this is very expensive, the R&D. I mean, you've got to put a lot of money into research and development. Uh, but I will need to get that at some point. So I am going to need some high-yield buildings. Um, so that, this is, um, uh, well, high yield missions is what I meant. Um, so this is going to the moon, Jebediah Kerman, bound on his Kerpolo 1 mission. I know, it's a terribly overused pun, but this is Kerpolo 1, I just couldn't think of a better name. So, um, Kerpolo 1 is bound for a flyby mission of the moon. It was using some cool little boosters, which I thought were very nice. And I'm using, um, those launch struts now, so that it doesn't get all embedded in the pad. And because it's quite a heavy rocket now, but that launch pad can sustain 140 tons worth of vehicle, which is more than enough for now, at least. Um, anyway, well, I'm just going to cruise to Apoapsis and um, burn off the rest of the fuel in the main stage, and then uh, burn off the well, burn off, well, hopefully not burn off all of the second stage since I need it for getting to the moon. Anyway, um, I've of course brought Jebediah Kerman, my most experienced pilot, and I think that actually means he's better at doing stuff like maintaining attitude control. Um, but yeah, it's always good to have uh, Jeb come along, he's a good pilot. Although I do have another, uh, I think I have three pilots in total, um, and then some scientists and engineers who don't get a lot of um, a lot of time, you know, on mission uh, right now because, uh, because well, because they well, I need pilots. Um, but annoyingly, I forgot solar panels, and because I'm using tech life support, that would mean he would be dead by the time he reached the moon. And that's no good, so I have to deorbit this, which is painful because this thing cost me 20,000 funds. Um, I have, however, accepted a mission to return scientific data from around the moon, which more than pays for this. I think it's, um, I think full yield, about 60 grand. Um, on top of the already mission, the missions I already have to explore the moon, that is a pretty good total science yield. But anyway, as I was saying, um, the uh, engineers and scientists don't get a lot of uh, mission time right now because it's much easier to go to space with pilots because you can maintain attitude control and it makes it much less likely that they will die. Anyway, based on the fact I've just lost all that money, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring this third stage home just so I get a little bit more money back. Yeah, that was a pretty big oversight. I've got to put solar panels on there, but it will be more than covered by the um, extra mission I took on. Um, I usually try and make uh, you know missions pay for pay for themselves by you know completing objectives, but sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes they have to be a bit philanthropic. Anyway, I'm trying to get a bit of scientific data just to um, you know make it slightly worth it, but uh, nothing can really be done. Anyway, this is now fully equipped with solar panels. Jebediah Kerman will not be killed. And it's time to launch. Um, I'm tipping over a little early so I can eject those um, solid rocket boosters, hopefully not onto the launch pad, because it would be rather terrible if they came down and destroyed something and cost me a lot of money. Um, they do burn out very quickly. I probably should have throttled them down so they'd be more effective boosters and they wouldn't, you know, risk hitting a building. But um, I forgot. And it worked out fine anyway. So, yeah. Um, ooh, interesting... Um, well, oh, well, not interesting fact, but just, like, sometimes, um, sometimes rockets do carry their boosters attached to their main stage, like, across, um, like, like, higher than they have to, just to, uh, just so that they can dump them not on land, because then they might hit something. So, yeah, sometimes you do waste a little Delta V to, you know, not kill people. But anyway, um, it's time to burn into orbit with the second stage. Follow the same profile, basically, but hopefully, you know, not have to return to Kerbin, you know, with fruitless experiments. Anyway, it's time to go to the moon. I don't have any uh, maneuver planning because I still haven't upgraded the, um, 
the tracking station, but I don't need it. I mean, I'm not going to be able to bullseye it because I'm just not that knowledgeable. Although I probably, after, you know, a bit of trial and error, could figure it out. But this is only my second time going to the moon in this series and my second time ever going to the moon without any, like, um, conics patches which show me, you know, how, where am I exactly going. So I'm putting it a little below the moon's orbit so I won't, in so I probably won't hit the moon. I'll be, you know, just passing by the moon. Um, but I think I'm a little too close to the um, orbit for that. So yeah, I will hit the moon. So it will require a quick course correction, which I will do now. And then I just need to grab a little bit of science. Um, just one crew report to uh, get paid by that mission and get about 50 grand. Um, so yeah, I just need to burn, I think, radially. Is it radially or normal? It's either radial or normal or something like that. So that I'll um, not slam into the moon. Because this is not a landing mission and it's definitely not a suicide mission. Um, so yeah. Uh, this mission actually is to get into orbit of the moon. Because I want to, cr um, I want to complete another one of those uh, missions I've been given. Um, for the ex exploration of the moon. So I will need to get some sort of orbit around the moon. Um to get a little more money, because I'm trying to get all the money I can for this, basically. I've got the 50 grand mission, I want to complete more of the explore the moon objectives. Um, so yeah, here's my crew report, that'll pay off very nicely. And I'll go back into four times time accelerate for the uh, following parts. Um, anyway, because the tracking station has not been upgraded, this is not technically in orbit, that's just what the... Um, well, that's just what what the uh, what the game's saying right now, but because I don't have the technology. But yeah, that's an orbit because I got the money for it. So anyway, I need to leave. Um, I have actually gone the wrong way around the moon. I should. Um, oh no, I was in a no. I was. It wasn't in a great position for returning. Um, I if I'd been a little earlier in the orbit, it would have been slightly better for a return trajectory. But anyway, it's fine. I have a ton of fuel, and I just need to get back quickly. So yeah, using the third stage, I deorbit. Um, around Kerbin and hopefully will not burn up and lose Jebediah Kerbin. And we get a weird UI glitch, not UI glitch, um, weird um, graphical glitch where I lose a whole continent there, but it soon returns as I get closer to Kerbin. Um, and I get hit by my third stage again, but luckily this is Kerbal Space Program. It doesn't matter, there will be no missing parts of, um, no missing parts of Heat Shield or anything. But anyway, um, we are now re-entering wonderfully through the atmosphere, and hopefully, uh, hopefully won't burn up, but it's looking good. I mean, obviously these are built to survive that. So, uh, yeah, just setting up the parachutes and returning. You'll notice there's actually something below the parachute, in between the parachute and the pod. That's a life support module from TAC Life Support, which gave me a lot more life support, just in case I was in space for longer than I thought I would be, so Jebediah would not die. Anyway, touching down in what looks like the grasslands, I believe, um, we're going to get a quick, you know, bit of a bit of an EVA report. Might as well get some science. Um, well, some more science, even. I didn't get a lot of science from this mission. It was more about the money, I have to say. Um, but yeah, let's uh, get back in our pod and see how we did from that mission. Um, it'll be, well, mainly monetary gain, maybe a little... Well, we got a bit of science, I believe, um, from various missions and various... Um, objectives that I've completed. Um, yeah, 17 science from those career reports. I will be taking some scientific equipment out there pretty soon, but that will all be in future episodes. Until then, this has been KSP with Tape. I will see you next time.